This week on Follow Me, it's all about business, networking, and girl power. I chat with Nicole Antoine, one of the founder of Four Brown Girls, a buzzworthy network with Montreal roots created by and for black women that aims to grow your network and your net worth. So come on on and follow me. Hi, Nicole and Jacqueline. How are you? Hi, Hi guys. Seven. Thank you for coming by. Follow me. I Thank know. you so much for having us. Yes, you're very active and you're one of the founders of Four Brown Girls. How did that movement start on social media? It started with a conversation. We were looking for an outlet, some people to follow, some mentorship, and we felt we were lacking people that resembled us in Montreal that we could follow and admire and ask questions to. So we started this movement uh, that already existed, but we kind of just gave it a little push and uh, we had our first brunch. It was super successful and we realized, okay, well, we might have something here. And then we decided to do more brunches and grow our social media platform. And now we do brunches, we do workshops, we do night events. We go to so, Ottawa, Montreal, <laughs> Toronto. Yes, so. you do travel. And yeah. I remember when four brown girls came to Ottawa, it was packed. Honestly, it was really packed. It was at Shankman and people lined up to come to your event. What made you come to Ottawa? Because it has roots in Montreal and you guys went to Toronto. But what made you come to Ottawa? Honestly, Ottawa was a very humbling experience. Um, it was nice to see that we had some brownies out here that was supporting us and following us. And it's really all through social media. We get messages all the time asking, can you guys come to Nova Scotia? Can you guys come to Ottawa? Can you? So we kind of just did a little um, research to see if, would people actually come to the event, and and we kind of felt out the the scene and <laughs> one two gone, <laughs> and uh, we took a gamble and we said let's try it. Even if we get 20 people, we're happy. We ended up selling out at 200, but yes. it was really something that we wanted to do not not for the numbers, but really for the messaging. And and. Why did you call it four brown girls? It could have been four black girls. Why four black, brown girls? Um, it's not a, an amazing story. I wish <laughs> I had a great story, but we were four girls that uh, started it and the chat group name was called four brown girls. So um, that's what the, the girl had decided and she put four brown girls. And when we were looking for something to call the event, because we're like, hey, we're not going to say just come to Nicole and Ariane's <laughs> event. So what we did is we said, let's just use our chat name. It's pretty good. Let's get a logo made. And it just really happened. So, boom, 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 boom. And uh, you're, you're a new mom. <laughs> yes. And you, you separate your business and your business uh, social media platform and your personal one, but sometimes you mix them. Why, why do you do so? Most people separate them just to have a clear editorial line. For sure. Why did you like, why do you mix both? That's a great question. Honestly, I felt that a lot of people are asking, uh, what's the soul and essence of Four Brown Girls? Who's behind this? Why am I following this? What does she do? What does she like? So uh, that's why I started to just open up my little personal life just a bit more so they can see that I'm human, I'm going through struggles just like the rest of them, and that it could be just a more relatable brand. Yes. Um, so this happens, right? Oh, Motherhood oh. happens, <laughs> like wedding that. happens, <laughs> pants fall down. <laughs> and that's the reality of being mom, it, balancing. Exactly. You know, it's a juggling act. Let's do this together. Let's, or, <laughs> or not, or not. <laughs> Well, but she could say she has a great T-shirt. <laughs> she has a great T-shirt. And and so when you became a mom, you decided to develop your brand to open up for with kids because you didn't have that a couple years ago. No, I didn't have a kid a couple years ago, but it kind of gave us a fresh perspective of what the what different women are going through. So mm. the realities of balancing and juggling motherhood and trying to you have something to say too. 
<laughs> and trying to discover yourself and the path that you want to go through. And when you have someone that you're accountable for, it kind of gives you even more of a push to, to really go head on and follow your dreams because you want to leave something for the next generation, a legacy, something that she can be proud of. You, you said on uh, a post recently on Mother's Day that uh, four brown girls took a whole new meaning when you became a mother. Why is so? I want her to be proud of me. I want her to be able to look back and be like, that was my mother. She stood for something. Um, I want, yeah, it's, I've always did it for my mom to be proud of me, my grandmother to be proud of me because they sacrificed so much for me to be where I am today. And then uh, going through this whole concept of motherhood <laughs> gave me an extra person uh, that I have to be accountable to. So that's what I meant when uh, I said four brown girls took a new meaning. And four brown girls went through a journey. You guys started with four girls? Yes. And now you're two? Yes. It kind of had like a little Destiny's Child <laughs> moment. Um, so I don't think I have to say more than that. But <laughs> yeah. uh, it went from four to two. I'm not going to say who's Beyonce. But <laughs> I would like it to be me. Um, but yeah, it went, it went through a necessary... I think she wants to be Beyonce. I know. Maybe you're Beyonce. <laughs> um, but it went through a necessary journey. And that growth uh, was invaluable to my partner and I in understanding where we wanted this to go and understanding <coughs> how we were going to get there. <laughs> I just think wants to be on TV. So do you think you're going to be expanding uh, four brown girls for little kids? Yeah, for sure. We thought of that. We're not there yet. Right now we need to take care of the woman in charge. And we need her to be good. We need her to feel great. And uh, once they feel great, yes, Mama. once they mm -hmm. feel great, then we can make sure that our kids feel great consequentially. Hello, do you feel great? To be on set? Yes. Huh? Because yes. honestly, your energy impacts your kids' energy. Yes, definitely. And how do you balance everything? Like, you know, you came with your little kid. Not everybody. Some people would say, well, she's a mother. She should stay home because that's her main focus. What gets you outside of, of your home with Jacqueline? Do, keep on doing four brown girls and also being a good mom, a good wife. Hi. Um... It's, it's priorities, right? And it's setting, it's time management, it's everything. And it's life, right? There's going to be meltdowns. There's going to be her telling me off. And it's all a part of the journey. And I don't want to edit that out of my life and just make sure that my husband feels happy, my, my family feels happy, my friends are happy. And I have such a great tribe and support system that uh, it's doable. Mm -hmm, it's definitely doable. Doable. And I have to say, Four Brown Girls has an amazing brand. And you Thank guys you. update it quite often. At the beginning, you could tell you guys were looking for your, your identity. Yeah. And now it's like, it's like an adulthood. Who does your branding? And how do you come up with that great idea to really be, be at the forefront of trends? For sure. Um, it's like I said, it's a growth, it's a journey. Um, what we do for that is I do a lot of research. I'm always on Pinterest. I love <laughs> Pinterest. And I just see what everyone's doing. I want to see what my competitors are doing. Uh, I want to see what people that are not my competitors but have a different social demographic, how do they go about, and see how I can meld it and make it something true to myself. And we do a lot of brainstormings. There's a lot of draft versions that go through. I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> and I like getting as much, uh, compiling as much data as possible mm -hmm. before putting out a, 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 a brand. Exactly. A product, yes. So now I feel like we're catching our stride. And now that we have a clear focus of where we're going, it's just like growing and we were seeing it by the amount of followers that are starting to press that follow button um so we know we're doing something right and we're, it's this is we're probably going to go through three uh, other or five other journeys and that's normal I exactly think, when you're growing yeah. yeah yeah so what's what's next for four brand girls i see that you used to have brunches events with panelists and now there's workshops yeah and i took part on the last one which was really great yeah, thank you. So we're trying to really answer the need of all of our followers. And uh, yes, Mama, we're trying to answer the needs of all of our followers. Our next thing that we want to do is a conference. 
So a full day panel event where workshops and everything incorporated, uh, pop-up shops and so forth. So where we're taking care of the female. So okay. it's really growing as different trends grow. Make sure that you stay interested and that people are interested in you. Uh, you have to continue changing because if you stay stagnant, um, your followership is just going to go down and yeah. you're not really answering the need of anyone. So what's a, what's a, what's a brownie? Like, I know a brownie is somebody that follows four brown girls, but describe who she is, what she does, and what she's all about. The brown girl is you and me. It's the girl that has a dream, uh, that uh, is not scared of glass ceilings, who's in the path of self-discovery. Um, our age group, everyone says, what's our age group? It really travels from 18 to in our 50s. We have people from all over, uh, Canadian women, and really making sure that they're represented and they're heard and that they're not invisible. And their realities and struggles are something that we want to kind of find solutions and kind of bump up uh, kind of feed off of each other and see how did you go through that or what are things that you did that I can apply to my life and so forth. It's supposed to be a sisterhood and we're pledging to make sure that we make our stamp uh, to ensure that everyone feels answered for. Yes. And when you get a messaging, uh, a DM for, for on social media, and it's a tricky question, do you consult with all your team before answering or you really reflect it, take that responsibility to reply directly because you guys get a lot of messages. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, I take the responsibility to reply because um, being at the core and the head of the brand, it's very important that uh, we stay on the same tone, the same playing field. So uh, I know our messaging and brand like the back of my hand. So I know how to answer these messages for sure when I think I need extra help. Not only do I consult my team, but I consult my friends, I consult my mother, I consult some of her uh, entourage to see how did you deal with this, how can we do this, or how can we take this to the next level, and what who should I connect her with, and so forth, because it's all about networking, and it's all about putting the right people together to make amazing things happen. And talking about putting the right people together in family, whenever I go to an event uh, for of four brown girls, I see your whole family. Um, I, I feel it's intergenerational. Yes. Uh, it's not only for people in our age bracket, but it's for older and younger people. Yes. Do you find that, is it part of your values? It's a part of my values. It's a part of our brand because you're nothing without your tribe. And mm. I'm honestly, I wouldn't be able to do half the things I do if I didn't have my tribe. They, they pull me up when I feel like I can't do it or I feel like I'm down on myself. And I'm surrounded by such amazing people, uh, friends, uh, family, aunts, grandmothers, and they come to my events. They, they have a smile, they give me feedback, mm -hmm. and it just makes me want to go in harder and better and show up every time. Yes, and by showing up, you show up on social media pretty regularly for <laughs> Four Brown Girls. And I'd like to know, what's your favorite social media platform? I would say Instagram. Um, yeah, I would say Instagram is my favorite social media platform. Why? Um, I love snooping. <laughs> I love You're checking. You're a snooper. Yeah, I'm a snooper. And especially being on mat leave this past year, I've been an extra, like, intense snooper. I could have gotten a degree in it. Um, so I love doing that. It's a first thing I do and it's also it's relaxing too right okay. uh, when I have downtime huh when I have downtime when she gives me downtime definitely like I'm snooping okay and That's who bad. do you snoop I I snoop Aisha Curry a lot uh, I feel like she's super relatable she's in our target age group uh, she's a mompreneur she's a boss she has her empire is so big and growing on social growing media. and her too with her son she brings him everywhere she shows that you're able to have it all um so her i like snooping her insta stories and all that stuff um i also like snooping oprah seeing what she's up to my girl and uh <laughs> I, I like some gossip sites too to see Such like as? um the shade room oh my god yes <laughs> you're guilty it's a guilty pleasure <laughs> the shade room i love even though sometimes i don't even know the characters that they're talking about it's it's such like it's a drama it's a mm -hmm. soap opera tmz a bit and uh i like um, 
fashion bomb Bailey daily. daily. She does like a lot of like what's yeah. current, what to wear, how to put things together. So I do a little bit of everything. So what's next for four brown girls? Are we gonna find some news about um, stars that you snoop around about? Yes, uh -huh. that is what's next. Um, but I don't like saying too much because just in case I want to keep the good energy out there. But yes, the people that we're snooping, uh, we're kind of understanding their brand, their hashtags, how do they maneuver, what are causes that are passionate to them so that we can be very strategic in how we approach them and what we offer them and say how Four Brown Girls can help their brand as well. Over the years, Four Brown Girls has lended great partnership with people. And the last time you had a workshop with Julia, yeah. which is uh, she just won an award for being a uh, media so social media influencer. She's a great influencer. She's great. How did you how do you get those great uh, partnership? Honestly, it's really about networking and putting yourself out there, not being shy because we have nothing to lose. And what's great about social media is that it gives us kind of free pass access to all these people that were not accessible and all of a sudden they're accessible. Uh, even when I was able to get Vanessa Kraft, the editor of Elle Canada, to come, that was huge for us. And it was just by being in her DMs, <laughs> sending her messages, and then she's like, you know what, they might have something. Can you please send us an email at this and tell us your pitch? So it's really making sure that you're ready because your chance can happen at any moment. And if you're not ready, you might lose it. So right now we're on your page, on the Four Brown Girls page. And as you can tell, I love the branding. It's so nice. Thank you. And I noticed a long time ago that you're a big Beyonce fan. I know. I was hoping that it didn't show too much. Uh, but she's doing amazing things for the culture. She's really showing us that to be black, beautiful, strong, uh, to be vulnerable. She's been through a lot. Um, so yeah, and I feel like a lot of women could uh, relate to that. So that's why I push Beyonce a lot. Also a big fan of yours is, uh, not a big fan of yours, but you're a big fan of, of Tracy Ellis Ross that was on the cover of Elle Canada. And uh, you were very proud when you got the editor uh, at one of your conference. What makes um, that event such a success for Four Brown Girls? It's a huge success because she really, uh, she really embodies giving everyone a platform to show their true self. And what's cool about this cover is that they shot her raw with not a lot of makeup, um, really showing her moles, showing her imperfections. And it was something so cool that was happening. And that was a time where I think there was like five or yes. 10 black women on different covers. So even though she said it wasn't planned, it was very historic in the sense to see, uh, <laughs> to see black representation, black women on top. It made her excited. Exactly. Um, and that's, that's what we celebrate at Fort Brown Girls. So it was perfect timing and I love Vanessa. Um, I would love to do something again with her. And now that we finish speaking about uh, who do you follow, I noticed that on your social media and the four brown girls social media platforms, the branding is on point. So what kind of app do you use to make sure that everything's on point all the time? Honestly, it's really filters. I don't really have time to put things through apps. Uh, we did a workshop recently that Drea showed us a whole bunch of apps that we need to download yes, and that's do. True. So that's on my to-do homework list. But right now, I just try to pick things that are authentic and uh, kind of show the real me, unedited, but still have a purpose. Like, I'm not going to take... If I were to put every picture that was on my phone, it'd be a Jacqueline Instagram <laughs> and not a Nicole Instagram. So I try to be selective and it's not, you don't have to post all the time. You mm -hmm. post when it's relevant and that's how your followers stay engaged. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You don't find? And do you have other apps that you think as a mom entrepreneur, we need to have like boss ladies need to have on their cell phones? Um, I'm big with Spotify. Uh, because Spotify, no ad, but <laughs> Spotify is great to have podcasts, music, and podcasts for the informative uh, side of things, and music just to de-stress and to kind of bring up your mood. It, so I love Spotify, Pinterest, inspiration. 
I get so much inspiration on there. And even things that I find kind of complimentary when I can't find what I want, then I'm like, oh, am I the first person to kind of create something kind of mm. unique? So it kind of shows you both things, what's out there, what's been done, and what's not been done. Um, so there's a lot of things that are missing, like uh, black girl birthday parties, mm -hmm. uh, things that are for us. So things like that are missing. So you can see right away that there's a niche, there's a need. Uh, because there's other people searching that as well. And that's why Four Brown Girls is so relevant. So we're going to keep on following you. And thank you for coming with Jacqueline, who is our first baby gas CEO Yay! on this couch. Give me five. Five. Uh, no, no. Let's do it.